Today on Dead Dodge Garage, I test drive a 1969 Dodge Charger with absolutely nothing special about it. Although the standard Charger looks fast, it was actually really bad. I just can't even imagine what it's like seeing this in your rear view mirror. Look at it. It's amazing. Just your average run-of-the-mill 440 automatic Charger. Shocked and appalled. Clear, damn you! Look, it's a metaphor! You ever put your hand in one of these? You always say that. Today on Dead Dodge Garage, we get a good one. The absolutely legendary 1969 Dodge Charger Daytona. In the course of my employment here at Rocket Restorations, I get to fiddle with some pretty cool stuff. This Daytona, pretty close to the top of the list. Now any Daytona is a good Daytona, but this one might just be the best, and I'll tell you why. Because it's a member of my favorite class of vehicle, a driver. It was treated to a complete detail restoration, including engine compartment and interior here at Rocket, before I started. But although the owner is considering this, so far it has not been treated to a complete body restoration. It's still wearing a years old touch up, body repair and paint job which is presentable, but far from perfect. As with just about every other project that comes through here, I did get to test and tune this one a little bit. And it's pretty great. Do you think he wants to race? Everyone gets really excited when they see it. To the point that they stop in the middle of the road and try to take pictures. One of the things I was doing today was adjusting the brakes. They would grab at the top of the pedal, but then there was a little bit more travel there. The adjustment on the rears was just nowhere near tight enough. Let's do a quick test now at about 50. Oh yeah, fantastic. Much, much better. In testing the other day, I actually got the brake warning light to come on. This car was actually finished right before I started at Rocket. They did a full front end rebuild, all the nice little stuff. And the front end is just solid. The alignment is great. It is a sweet driving car. Ah, we did also adjust the kick down. Let's test that. Mopar in general, you know exactly what this is. There's really not a lot I could say about it except look at it. It's amazing. I just can't even imagine what it's like seeing this in your rear view mirror. It's probably terrifying and a little confusing. If you don't know these cars, I'll give you a quick primer. Basically, the factory charger body is bad. Not only is it not aerodynamic, it's terrifying. The factory set-in window creates a weird low pressure area that starts to lift the back of the car off of the ground. Chrysler took a first stab at fixing this problem in 1969 with the Charger 500. It had the same rear window plug you see here. This wing provides something like a thousand pounds of downforce. It's also slightly adjustable. It's really only this tall so you can fully open that shortened trunk lid. It doesn't need to be, you know, that big. But making it that big gave these things this crazy memorable look. I've read people trying to explain these as tire clearance. Um, no. 
For one thing, it would hit that brace long before it reached the fender. Even if you don't know these cars, you could probably guess that they are extremely valuable. So, unfortunately, being that this is not mine, I can't really test it at super speedway speeds, but, you know, maybe we could tip into it a little bit, see what that's like. spec built 440 HP. It's smooth. It's got plenty of torque. It sounds fantastic. Someone's been doing donuts here. Uh, it wasn't me, I swear. As someone who owns and drives often a 1968 Charger that looks very nice. I'm familiar with people getting excited about cars. Even my crappy darts, you know, people point. Actually, our station wagon, of all things, sort of gets people the most excited. Being in this car, just turn that up to like 11 and a half. I mean, people go nuts for it. Either because they know what it is, or maybe because they don't, and it just looks so crazy. It does not look like something that should be driving down a back road. Daytonas are long. Because we happen to have a regular charger here, I thought I'd put the two next to each other for comparison's sake. Now I've read quite a bit on the Daytona and the Charger 500 over the years. And while I'm not an expert, I do know why it exists. Because although the standard charger looks fast, it was actually really bad. As someone who has been 130 miles an hour, allegedly, on a back road at night in a 1968 Dodge Charger, I can tell you exactly what starts to happen at that sort of speed. The back end of the car starts to lift off the ground. Now a big part of that is this design. It creates a low pressure area or something. What the heck do I know about aerodynamics? Anyway, the end result is wind does weird things and the tail of the car wants to take off like an airplane. At the same time, this humongous gaping grill in the front is just catching all kinds of air and doing weird stuff as well. In general, it's just bad. Even though it looks fast, this rear window plug found on the Charger 500 and the Daytona solved that low pressure area problem behind the rear window. On the 1969 Charger 500, they fixed the grill problem by fitting a coronet grill with no hidden headlights flush with the end of the hood and the fenders. That improved things significantly. But then they turned it up to 11 on the Daytona with the nose cone. In testing, they found this design to be highly advantageous at high speed. It's kind of hideous, but it works. Of course, while it's kind of ungainly and humongously long and really just looks like it was boogered onto the car, it worked very well and it created an extremely iconic design that, well, everyone knows. And then to seal the deal on downforce, they added this wing. It really didn't need to be this tall, but if it was any shorter, you couldn't fully open the trunk. So there it is. It would have been just as effective like here. These vents are for air to escape from the wheel well area. That helps at high speed too. Everything about this design was made to combat the original characteristics of the Charger design and make this car drop, sink to the ground, and stay there at high speed. The other obvious difference is here, this A-pillar cover covers up the drip rail edge there, which is another weird breakup for air at high speed. It doesn't look like much, but they deem that enough of a factor to make an extra piece to fix it. One of the best things to me about this car is the true crudeness of the conversion. You can look at the front edge of the trunk lid and see that was just folded over. The window plug and trim really don't match the hole that they're in. The finish here is terrible. There's no trim piece to cover that piece of metal that's folded over. And you can clearly see where the original back window would have been. In fact, every one of these cars shipped from the factory to be converted with a back window to seal them from the elements. So it's very common to find broken glass behind the back seats of these cars. How cool is that? The car you see before you is one that was built for homologation purposes. These things were purpose-built to win at NASCAR, which they did quite successfully. 
to the point that they were almost immediately banned. But Chrysler had to make 500 or more to sell as street versions to homologate the car. It had to be a production vehicle. There are a lot of urban legends and conflicting reports you can hear about these things. For instance, some people say that the nose cones were removed and they were converted to regular chargers just to sell because they weren't very popular on the lots. I've heard other people say that the reports they were converted to regular cars are silly and not at all true. I wasn't there, so I don't know. Driving this car really is like driving a regular Charger. Well, people don't really look at it like a regular Charger, but the driving experience is the same. Until about 100 miles an hour, that's when the party happens. Of course, I haven't gotten to drive this car that fast, and I won't, but maybe one day. You know, unlike some classic cars, like, I don't know, Mustangs, this thing is exactly what you think it is. It does exactly what you think it does. I like that. <laughs>